Welcome back to the PIMS how-to series. In the previous video, we discussed the main concepts and structures in PIMS submodels. Now let's look at the specifics of each type of submodel. The first type of submodel we are looking at here is a fixed or direct yield submodel, which represents the process units with fixed yield fractions. In the volume sample model we have been using, the naphtha hydrotreater, table SNHT, is one example of a fixed yield submodel. The yields are based on the feed stream flow rate and the yield fraction coefficients are fixed values. In other words, the yields are not dependent on the feed qualities or any other variables. The second type of submodel is a base delta submodel, and it represents process units in which the feed stream qualities or operational parameters will affect the yield fractions. Let's look at some example yield data for a reformer, which we will use to build a base delta submodel table in PIMS. An important note is that this is a linearized representation and is based on either rigorous reactor simulation models or measured plant data. Either data source is then linearized. To set up a base delta submodel, we first must collect the following information. We need to determine the base quality value of the feed stream and the corresponding yield fraction values. In our example, this will be at a feed n plus 2a value of 50. Then we must calculate the slope of yield change, which is equal to the change in yield divided by the change in feed quality. In our example, these are at 35 and 65 for n plus 2a. For example, in the reformer submodel, when the feed stream quality n plus 2a increases, the production of hydrogen and 95 octane reformate rise while production of LPG drops, as you can see in the chart here. In the reformer submodel, we select n plus 2a base value to be 50, and then we calculate the change in yield per change in feed quality. You can see here the calculations discussed. Each one shows the delta in yield divided by the delta in feed quality using the points on the chart. Feel free to pause here and study. So if n plus 2a value increases by 5, the yield fractions will change by the following amounts. Notice that LPG has a negative yield, meaning that it's actually going to decrease as the n plus 2a increases. Now let's look at where to put these data into the submodel table. This is an example of a reformer submodel. Similar to fixed yield submodels, base delta submodels have feed columns or feed vectors which represent the flow rate of the feed streams. In our example, this feed column is shown as RFD, which stands for reformer feed. In addition, we need to set up base vector and delta vector columns. The base vector, in our example BAS, represents the yield per unit of feed generated at the base feed quality. In our example, this was 50 for n plus 2a. The yield fraction coefficients at the base value are entered in the base vector column in corresponding material balance rows. The delta vector coefficients in column n2a represent the amount of yield adjustment when the feed quality changes. These are the yield adjustment coefficients corresponding to a feed n plus 2a change of 5. These calculated yield fraction coefficients are then entered under the delta column. Then we need to enter E rows to set up the correlations between the base vector, the delta vector, and the feed vector. This E row drives the yields for the actual feed rate. The E change ref row in reformer submodel creates the equation as shown here. With transformation, we see that the equation sets the base vector equal to the feed vector. All this results in material balance rows for yields that are adjusted based on the feed stream quality. Let's look at hydrogen, as shown here. You can see it has a term for the base vector and then a term for the delta vector. Feel free to pause here and study. The next E row is to balance quality barrels, in this case, N plus 2A barrels and compare actual feed quality with the base feed quality. This determines the amount of adjustment required for current feed quality. In this way, PIMS can tell how much quality deviation it has from the base quality, so as to decide how much the yield fraction coefficient should be changed. In the reformer submodel, this row contains the base quality value under the base vector column. The quality deviation under the delta vector and negative 999 under the feed vector. Negative 999 in PIMS is the placeholder, 
It represents a quality value that PIMS knows already exists in the model. So the three character tag after E in the row name should be the tag for the quality that affects the yields. According to the row name and column name where the negative 999 is entered, PIMS will pick up the quality value and place it in the matrix. So in this example, negative 999 in the E N2A ref row is the N2A value of the RFD stream. Then the E N2A ref equation is, and again, rearranging, we have We need to keep in mind that the feed quality may be higher or lower than the base value. So we need to allow the quality adjustment to be positive or negative by designating the delta vector as a free column. To do this, in our submodel, we put a 1 under the delta vector in the free row. Lastly, we can also adjust yields based on multiple feed properties at multiple operating conditions. If you're looking to learn more about this, you can refer to the volume sample model. The diesel hydro treater submodel table SDHT is a relatively simple example, similar to the one we did today. Or you can look at the FCC submodel table, table SCCU, for a more complex example. Thank you for watching. If you would like more information, visit our website at www.aspentech.com and click on Products, then Petroleum Supply Chain.